All right. Uh, second session, which will be our final session. Apostle back in the evening with our next speaker also. Um, I need to introduce our friend from Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> Bishop Kula from Nairobi, Kenya. May stand to your feet. His flight was delayed, so he landed at 4 a.m. So we thank you for your sacrifice that you are here right this morning. Amen. All right, our next speaker, Apostle Joshua Selman. All right. I, I don't want to repeat what I said um, yesterday, but after his ministration, you understand what we are saying. All right. Um, He's bringing a perspective to the message in this country that is very unique. And you can't... God puts people in certain locations so that they can interpret that, you know, it's called the manifold, manifold wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God has many sides to it. And so he's bringing a side and dimension of God's wisdom to this generation that is very bold. That message you preached yesterday was a bold message. All right? He crossed boundaries. You know, when you get to a point, you look at it and say, let's not say that he, he, he broke the boundaries there. And he broke it in accuracy in the spirit. And you should listen to that message over and over. All right? You should listen to that message over and over. Because that message in itself has real healing in it. Uh -huh. uh, it, it explains a lot of things. What he said in passing is very true. COVID made some people stop coming to church who have always wanted to stop coming. <laughs> and so when there was COVID, they just took it as an exit because they got to a point in their work with God that some things were not being explained to them that they were experiencing. And he went into that dimension there all right, and, um, and said it. And the reason why he can speak like that is because of his background from where he's coming from. I won't say more than that. Let's rise to our feet and welcome Apostle Joshua Selma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Pastor Poggi, thank you again. Thank you sincerely. And um, I want us to honor and appreciate Apostle Grace Lubega. I didn't, I, 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 sadly, I thought I'd be able to follow his teaching. I always like to connect with whoever speaks before me, but then I can assure you that you were blessed. Am I right on that? Yes. Blessings to him again. Let's give him a big hand clap. And then, um, it's good to see you, Reverend Kula. Thank you. We really honor you, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's lift our hands one more time to the one who grants wisdom and the one who grants grace. Let's ask him to speak to us this morning and challenge our hearts in the name of Jesus. Remember, the Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth thank you Jesus for understanding let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. 
rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me holy ghost power rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me power to prosper Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that our speakings would not just be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I pray that you grant us understanding and cause us to pray and prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I felt stirred in my heart while preparing for this session that... We'll be doing a lot of praying within the time that we have. I just sense in my spirit that God truly wants to release something tonight. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is building momentum through all the teachings in the morning as we just prepare for a very serious release tonight. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We'll pray once and again within the course of the time that I have. And I hope that you do not mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to challenge us in the area of prayer this um, morning. Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24. Jesus was teaching. He used the event cursing the fig tree. And then he began to establish the matters of faith. 23 says, verily... I say unto you that whatsoever, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. The next verse, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and thou shall have them. So we see a straight line connecting desires, prayers, believing, receiving, and having. It is the complete faith equation that Jesus gives there. Desires, prayer, believing while you pray, receiving while you pray, then having as a manifestation. And so you cannot take prayer out of the faith equation. It is a vital component in the faith equation. Jesus himself is teaching and he says that the only way desires can become your having, your manifestation, is that somewhere in the faith equation, prayer has a role to play. Are we together? Very, very powerful. James chapter 5, we'll read 13, then we'll jump to 16. He says, is any man among you afflicted? The word afflicted there does not just mean plagued with infirmity alone. Experiencing any kind of constraint that impedes you walking in victory. He says, let him, such an individual... The moment you come into an awareness that there is any kind of constraint that can spy upon your liberty in Christ, the apostle recommends that your first port of call is to pray. Hallelujah. But not any kind of prayer. There is a recommended prayer that deals with this situation. Verse 16, he now says, 
the effectual please give it to us it says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed then he says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man the bible says avail it much and i just want to charge our hearts along this line so prayer is a major component in manifesting bible faith it is very important that we establish this prayer is a major component in manifesting bible faith that anyone any believer in christ who will and must manifest bible faith it is important for you to know that prayer is part of the faith equation that brings manifestation to the things that we desire. Are we together? Very quickly, just for our understanding, according to scripture, prayer has four major assignments in the life of a believer. And if you allow me, just run through them. I'm not teaching on them, but just for our understanding so that we'll understand the things that I say afterwards. There are four biblical assignments of prayer it's important that you know to what end the believer is mandated to pray. Most people pray, but they really do not know the assignment of prayer. It's an uncomfortable truth, but prayer is not the key to everything. But prayer must be involved in everything. The assumption that prayer is the key to everything simply because of the role it carries is not accurate. We are emotionally connected to prayer in Africa for a very good reason. But it's important to know that as potent as prayer is, it is one of the keys of the kingdom. But the unique nature of the prayer ministry is that when it is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. So it is involved in every aspect of our lives. Are we together? The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Then it says, in everything. So there is no matter in a man's life that prayer becomes unnecessary. However, there are keys. It connects to other components in the kingdom to produce victory. If we're together, say amen. amen. Right? So, four assignments of prayer very quickly. Number one, the first assignment of prayer, which is a more superior assignment of prayer, is for your growth and transformation. Most believers do not understand this aspect of prayer. It is the reason why our prayer lives are stunted in many ways. Because the most superior assignment of prayer is not just for needs and petitions. It's a system that was designed for our growth and our transformation. Luke 9.29, the Bible says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. When we pray, we evolve. When we pray, we become. When we pray, there is a transition that happens to us in the spirit that a weak you can become a strong you. Are we together? A fearful you can become a bold you. There is an exchange that happens in the place of prayer. And most people have not understood this dimension of prayer. Number two, the second assignment of prayer according to scripture is to make requests and obtain promises. We considered a bit of that in passing yesterday. Prayer is a platform to make requests and to obtain promises. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, we read that, I just quoted that not too long. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, that platform of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, let your requests be made known. Don't assume they are made known. Let your request be made known. Hallelujah. Number three, the third assignment of prayer according to scripture is for decrees and establishing spiritual realities. We use prayer as the platform to make decrees, to create possibilities, to establish spiritual realities. Are we still together? Job chapter 22 and verse 28, it says, And thou shalt decree, not assume, not wish, thou shalt decree a thing, 
and the thing that you decree, not the thing that you want or wish, shall be established unto thee. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. The fourth assignment of prayer according to scripture is for warfare and intercession. This is a dimension of prayer. Warfare and intercession. This is very important. The Bible already told us in John chapter 10 and verse 10 that Satan is called the thief and that he comes with the singular goal of stealing, killing, and destruction. Apostle Peter charged us in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 to be sober and to be vigilant. He says, for your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. And then, of course, Ezekiel chapter 22, I believe verse 30, he says, and I sought for a man, I like that scripture, among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So prayer becomes a prophetic platform for warfare. What is warfare? Engaging through the understanding of scripture and establishing the victory that is in Christ. You see that now? Over the situations that attempt to fight and plague your authority in Christ. It's important that you understand this. But you see, when it has to do with prayer, there are various kinds of prayer that the Bible identifies. I'm not going into that. This is a charge this morning so that we pray. The Bible tells us there is something called praying amiss. Am I right on that? There are all kinds of prayer and the Bible is very clear as to the fact that not every kind of prayer produces power. There is a recommended kind of prayer and a pattern of prayer that produces power. Hallelujah. Two conditions according to James chapter 5 and verse 16 that must be captured in the prayer of the righteous to produce power. I want you to please listen now. There are two important components as revealed in chapter 16 of James 5 that if and when they are not captured in your prayer, your prayer cannot produce power. Number one, the Bible says, the effectual fervent. I like to reverse it for the sake of our understanding. So number one, the Bible talks about fervency. That the prayer of the believer that produces power, power to influence, power to manipulate, power to establish according to divine order must be prayer that is fervent. What does it mean to be fervent? It means from the heart, it means with zeal, with passion, and with truthfulness. Are we together? Very important. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. In the dealings of God with men, we learn from scripture and even from experience that God seems to respond to passion and sincerity and hunger. It seems to me like the spirit of God does not pay so much respect to laxity and carelessness. God wants to see intention and fire. Even in error, he respects the passion and corrects you. There is nowhere God sees passion that he ignores. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I don't know whether what I'm doing is right or wrong, but I'm not going to let you go. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. Every time God sees passion, he interprets it as the person being serious, even if in ignorance. So the Bible says, the fervent, are we together? The fervent from the heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, and you shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. There is a level of seriousness and intention that must be invested in the prayer of the righteous if it is to produce power. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, we'll read verse 12, then for time we'll jump, to, we'll jump to 15. Is God helping us already? The Bible says, and they, the nation of Judah, they entered into a covenant, watch this, to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Notice now, 
All of them was plunged into that covenant. Verse 16. The Bible says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had... Okay, thank you. Give us verse 15. Just stop at verse 15. Did I give you... Yeah, 15 is fine. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart, and the Bible says they sought him with their whole desire. What was the result? He was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. The Bible says the fervent. You want the kind of prayer that changes things, changes you, and through you influences your world? It is prayer that comes with fervency, zeal, passion, seriousness. There were people in the Bible God did not take serious and the Bible was not quiet about it. It was clear that God did not have respect for them because there was no fervency and no passion invested in their commitment, whether their relationship or their activity. The first of such expressions as we see um, was in the life of Cain and Abel. The nature of their investment in their sacrifices and the violation of patterns or the observance of patterns led one sacrifice to be accepted and the other God did not have respect for it. Hallelujah. Fervency, zeal, and passion. The Bible said this about Jesus himself, that the zeal of the Lord's house had consumed him. Is that true? This is the reason why he frowns at lukewarmness in Revelation chapter 2. He wrote to one of the churches, I think to Ephesus or thereabout or Philadelphia, one of them. And he says, I wish that thou art hot or at least cold. If you are hot, I commend you. If you are cold, I redeem you. But now you are lukewarm. You are, you are in between. Every time God saw people who swung to one side of the pendulum, if they needed deliverance, they admitted it and they were delivered. If they were vibrant and full of fire, he would commend them. But he always frowned at people who were nonchalant, passive, careless, even about spiritual things. Someone say fervent. fervent. One more time say fervent. fervent. That when believers pray, it is important for them to have this understanding that they are not praying to an idol and all of them must be invested in that prayer. Number two, this is the part that I want us to look closely to because in, in truthful submission, especially within the continent of Africa, I think we've done a good job in the area of fervency in prayer. The average African prays with zeal, with passion, or at least a semblance of it. Am I right on that? <laughs> now, the second word that must be captured in our prayer to produce power is called effectual. Effectual. Let me your attention. This is my message. What does it mean to be effectual? Effectual means to use or to engage in a way that avoids loss or waste of time and energy. Listen carefully. Effectual by definition means to use or to engage in a way that avoids loss, L-O-S-S, or waste of time and energy. So you are effectual to the degree to which you are efficient and there is minimal loss of energy of time and resources. Am I right on that? The Bible says the kind of prayer that produces power in the spirit is prayer that is number one, fervent. Your heart condition, your zeal, your passion. But number two, it says it must be effectual. Most believers I observed here, they pray fervent sincere heartfelt prayers but very few believers pray effectual prayers remember we're going to pray what then makes prayers effectual it's important for us to understand at what point do you know that your prayer is effectual is it by the sound of your voice is it by the motions that follow the prayer as well intentioned as they are let me show you from scripture 
Are you ready? What makes prayers effectual, listen, is the degree to which the will of God is captured in that prayer. You have to understand this. What makes prayer effectual is not the sincerity of the one praying alone. The degree to which the will of God is captured in that prayer operation is what makes prayer effectual. So the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, if it is truly effectual and if it is truly fervent, the Bible says it produces power. Are we learning now? So what makes prayer effectual, I repeat, is the degree to which the will of God is captured in that prayer. The word compliancy of your prayer is what makes it powerful. Not just the spirituality of the activity of prayer. The degree to which you are praying the will of God is where the guarantee for answer and power lies in. If you're understanding me, say amen. amen. Now write this down, please. Praying the will of God is beyond attaching scriptures to prayer. <laughs> Just listen carefully. You came to church. Praying the will of God is beyond attaching scripture because you will be learning that the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak anything you want to hear. So just because a scripture was connected to what you are saying does not mean when Satan wanted to bring Jesus down, he started by just talking casually. But when Jesus responded, it is written. From then on, every other thing he said, he connected it to scripture. Yet it was not the will of God. Is that in your Bible? So just because you found a scripture for what you want does not mean it's the will of God. Say amen. amen. I promise that we're going to be praying, so we'll soon pray. Maybe in the next five minutes we'll pray and then we'll continue. Are we learning now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you pray consistent with the will of God, the Bible leaves us with an assurance that your prayer becomes effectual. 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 This is very powerful. I will talk a bit about this. But let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. May I request that we read in concert when we have it projected. Ready? One to read. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. One more time please. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15, if you do not mind. And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, when we read 15 to 17, Paul makes a profound statement that I did not understand for many years. He said, see that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately. Are we together? Accurately, not as fools, but as wise. Where is the wisdom in that statement? He says you are wise when you redeem time because the days are evil. Are we together now? That means according to Paul's understanding, the most expensive commodity on earth is time. He says in all your living, do not waste time. And that you must master the art of redeeming time. And the wisdom to redeem time according to this scripture in verse 17, he says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. That means the moment you know the will of God, you redeem time. Because the time that you move in error and confusion, and then you return back is minimized. Discerning the will of God is one of the ways we gain time. Because you walk accurately, knowing that you are at the heart, the epicenter of the will of God. And the apostle calls that wisdom. Are we together? This is very important. The entire kingdom system was built around the will of God. It is important that we understand these believers. 
the entire system of the kingdom was built around the will of God. When Jesus was teaching what we call the Lord's Prayer, he says when you pray, you pray that your kingdom come. And then he says, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So you would notice that the entire economy of heaven revolves around the will of God. In fact, this is the assignment of the power of God to maintain the will of God in the life of the believer and across the cosmos. When the will of God is not in place, the power of God has no assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to enforce and to maintain the will of God. The reason why the sick are healed it's not because the power of God can heal. It's because sickness is inconsistent with the will of God. So the power of God finds an assignment there. What gives the power of God assignment, are we together now, is its ability to bring all things to line up with the will of God. If you understand the concept of the will of God, then you will have power in your prayer. Are we together? Because you see, the first assignment of the believer in approaching prayer is to understand the will of God concerning what you are about to pray for or to understand how to find out the will of God. Making decrees is useless until you ascertain you are in the will of God. Are we together now? Every time you are in ignorance as to the will of God, your first assignment is to get to a point of understanding. And I'm going to be showing you. So you see that most believers do all kinds of things around the place of prayer. And just because sincere energy was dissipated, we hope that God will sympathize with our passion and somehow answer it. You see, God has bound himself to honor his word. The Bible says he exalts his word even above his office. If you're learning, say amen. amen. So the Bible talks about the will of God as the secret that makes prayer powerful. But in truth and in experience, we learn that there are many aspects of the will of God that are clear and known from Scripture. But from a pragmatic standpoint, there are times where unique to your destiny, you will be at a loss as to the unique expression of God's will. A provision was made in our dealings with God where men can tap into that intelligence are we together now? That the will of God was, that was prior to that time not known, it can be known. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Hallelujah. So very quickly, two ways to pray the will of God. Are we learning? Number one. Perhaps let me back down a bit and just establish a few things and then we'll understand. There are three layers to scripture and I want you to please listen. This Bible you see essentially has at least three layers. There could be more. But there are three layers to the Bible. Number one, there is a historic slash archaeological layer to scripture. That means this book you see is also a piece of archaeological and historic material. Are we right on that? There are people who are not Christians and have had to make reference to the Bible in writing their thesis and in building up their points for whatever faith practice. So this is an archaeological material. When you read the Bible, you see history captured. When you read the Bible, you see archaeology captured. That is a layer. The second layer to scripture is called a doctrinal layer. Now, this one, you have to be a believer to have the eyes that sees and understand. The doctrinal layer to scripture. Are we together? This is where the intelligence and the wisdom of God is derived from scripture. When a historian who is not born again reads the Bible, he cannot see the doctrinal sense that is connected in it. The Bible just looks like a gap of events that were put together, canonized together. But there is the doctrinal layer of scripture. This is where um, the system of intelligence of the believer is built around. Is built around doctrine. Are we together now? The third layer is called the prophetic layer of scripture. This one, 
um, it is enhanced when you have a sound understanding of doctrine. But it is the Holy Spirit that opens you up to that layer. And you can have revelations that are not general to everybody. It is given to you as a unique weapon of victory. That comes to you as rhema that you will engage and produce results. Another person may use it and it may not work for the person. You can be praying in scripture, for instance, trusting God, where do I establish myself? And a scripture will come to you. You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn northwards. That's not a word for everybody. It, to you, it has ministered the answer to what you are looking for. And you will follow it literally, and it will open a door for you. But another person may apply that scripture, and it will not work for the person. There is a prophetic layer to scripture. Do you understand this now? Yes. This is very powerful. It is the reason why the study of scripture outside of the ministry of the Holy Spirit will lead to a lot of imbalances because you will find many, many scriptures and not be able to connect them intelligently to produce the will of God. He said, ye search the scripture, for in them you think that, you see, you see what Jesus was saying? Those guys were studious, but they did not respect the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus, who was the word incarnate, when he came, they could not even connect him with the things they were studying. They had the knowledge of scripture, but the word incarnate, the logos of God was standing before them. And yet, how do you have such a rich bank of scripture, and then the logos is standing, and you cannot connect two of them? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Number one, the two ways that we pray the will of God in the place of prayer is number one, by praying scripture-based prayer. You just write scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. I made a statement earlier on and it's time to bring it balanced that just because you found a scripture does not mean you are in the will of God. That is true. But generally speaking, when your prayer is word compliant, you must find a scripture according to the written word. Are we together now? A scripture that supports, this is how the technology of heaven works. Just saying, God, do it. You said it. Where? He said, present your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Are we together now? When Blind Bartimeo, you notice Blind Bartimeo never said, Jesus, have mercy on me. He said, thou son of David. Jesus understood what he was saying. You have a covenant with David. There was a covenant that God had with David. And I'm standing to invoke that covenant. The woman in Luke chapter 12 who had suffered the issue of blood, he said, is this, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, there is a basis. Not just that she has suffered 18 years. She's a daughter of Abraham. And I left Abraham a promise that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And part of the component of that blessing is wholesomeness. Wholeness. So this woman's state is a demonstration that God is not faithful. And when Jesus saw it, being the express image of God, he had to change it to represent the will of God correctly there. That was the basis for her healing. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Scripture-based prayer. It is the reason why believers must be equipped with sufficient understanding of Scripture. So that in the place of prayer, you pray with authority, knowing that the written word of God has a very rich capture, a rich expression of his will. So for instance, you are praying and trusting God for healing. Just saying, God, heal me. I know, are you not powerful? Don't be watching me like that. That is sympathetic prayer, but it is not fervent. It is not effectual because there is no scriptural basis for your demand. You see how we pray. An average believer prays this way. And not to be sarcastic, but just quite honestly. Father, thank you. The whole preambles, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, king of kings, lord of lords. And once we pass that, then we go straight to the fact that God, I'm here again. Is it that you are not, you cannot hear me? You are hearing this one. You are doing this one in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you now, you, you know, and so on and so forth. And then just because we say amen at the end of what we're saying. 
Honestly, it may be sincere prayer, but as matured believers, we must learn that not every kind of prayer, God is almighty, but he has bound himself to the operation of his word. It is the reason why as powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. There was a protocol he had to submit to until man was redeemed. Because it is written that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And God who created man and created the law submitted himself. Not even him could cast away sin from man. When you understand this about God, that God did not spare his own son. He also allowed him to submit to what the word said prophetically that must be the condition for redemption. If he did not spare Jesus, God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He's called compassion, but he's moved with his word, by his word. To be touched does not mean he will just act. He is touched. And when God wants to help you by being touched, he sends you his word. Is someone learning now? Yes, Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. That every time you are praying, making your petitions, you take the time as a responsible believer to find scriptures that supports that which you know God wants to do in your life. Blindly assuming that God, you said you will prosper me. God, I know you. You are too good to allow me this way. Those things are very sincere, but you will not get resolved that way. Are we together? Number two. The second way we pray the will of God is by praying in the Spirit. Engaging the wisdom of the Spirit in praying. So as to birth the will of God. This is very powerful. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, when you read 26 and 27, Romans 8, 26 and 27, likewise it says, the Spirit helpeth in our infirmity. What is infirmity there? Contextually, the word infirmity there does not mean sickness. It means limitations by reason of wearing a mortal body. We are limited in our understanding. We see in part and we prophesy in part because of that limitation. Now, there are three dimensions of God's nature he did not share with man. I don't have the time to explain this here, but it's important for us to know. When the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his nature he gave man. I hope you know that. There are certain dimensions of God's nature that are exclusive to him. Three of them. Number one, his omnipresence. He did not share that with man. Number two, his omnipotence. The ability to be all powerful. And then number three, his ability to be omniscient, all knowing. These three dimensions of God, he did not share with man. They brand him in a class all by himself. Are we together now? So man is not all powerful. Our power is derived. That's why we have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. God does not have authority because authority demands that you must be regulated. <laughs> Every time you give a man authority, there must be a system above that man that supervises the management of that power and authority. Are we together now? Yes. I know the Bible says all authority has been given. Notice Jesus is speaking as a man. All authority. Authority is given. It is not derived. It is given. Given by one higher than you. God was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him. But he did not find any. And so that's what makes him all powerful. You get it now? Yes. Demons have power but they do not have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. An armed robber has a gun. A military man has a gun. They both have power, but one has authority. That's why he will not be jailed for shooting. The other guy does not have authority. Are you getting the point now? Believers were not just given power. If the only thing God gave us is power, we're in trouble. It means we operate just like demon spirits. What gives us an edge is that we have authority. Is the reason why he honors us when we 
when we, we make declarations in the spirit because we have power and authority. How did I get here? Praise God. Are we together now? Yes. This is important. Praying in the spirit. So the Bible says we're looking at Romans chapter 8 from verse 26. The spirit helped our limitations. What is the limitation? We know not what we should pray for as we ought. This is a limitation. This is what the Holy Spirit helps. That there is a deficiency in all men by reason of wearing a mortal body and by reason of the fallen nature. That we do not have accurate perception of what the will of God is in all matters. This is why God gave us the Holy Spirit to become that advantage to that limitation. Then the Bible says, whoever is aware of such a limitation will now recognize that the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The next verse, please, 27. The Bible says, He, He being the Spirit that searcheth the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because He maketh intercession for the saints. How? A According to the will of God. So the recommended approach to pray over a matter where the will of God is not clear is to pray in the spirit. And that the Bible says there is a transaction that happens when you pray in the spirit. Eventually, the spirit of God who is also the revealer of the heart of God. Are we together now? He will meet you at the point of your passion. Where the will of God is revealed, then on the basis of scripture, we can pray and make petitions with authority, knowing that this is the confidence we have, that when we ask anything, when I'm praying for the sick, I don't verify whether it's the will of God. It's been established from scripture. By his stripes we are healed. He is called Rapha. Are we together now? I am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly. That is sufficient basis for my confidence. So when I minister to the sick, I minister with confidence, not in my own sufficiency, but that the words of God, his promises are yea and amen. This is what gives us confidence to pray and to minister by the spirit. But then there are matters in life and destiny where should I be? Where should the church be planted? Are we together? And all those kinds of things. It is not directly written in the Bible for you. Even though when the Holy Spirit gives you his word, you will find a scripture that relates to it. So what you do is to engage in the spirit. And continually engage in the spirit. You are doing two things in one. One is you are already communing with God according to the will of God. But number two, because you are the one who needs to act out his will, the Holy Spirit will search the mind of the Father and transport to you the will of the Father for your destiny. You don't stop praying until the knowledge of the will arrives. That was the goal of the prayer. At what point do you stop praying in the Spirit when the will of God concerning your life is revealed? You don't stop praying when you are tired. You don't stop praying after one hour or after five hours. What governs the prayer is not chronological time. What governs the time is traveling until the knowledge of the will arrives. If it takes 21 days, you keep going. If it takes two hours, you keep going. You see that now. Mechanically selecting time for your prayer. It may help you in terms of giving you spiritual discipline. But there are times for many reasons that I may not discuss here. You will need to travel. When a woman goes to the hospital to give birth, she doesn't give the doctors two hours. She goes there knowing that her goal is until the child arrives. Sometimes she gets there and in 30 minutes the child is out. But there are times she's there one week. She stays patiently with the confidence that my goal is to birth this child. How about the time she's carrying twins? How about the time she's carrying triplets? Other women may come and go and leave her there because of the kind of thing she's birthing. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Most believers are sincere and passionate, but they do not respect the will of God as a vital component in prayer. 
most people will not understand the advantage God gave us in giving us the Holy Spirit and giving us the prayer language. It's been an age-long argument as to whether praying in the spirit in tongues as we know is necessary for believers. It is because we do not understand the way the kingdom works that as compassionate as God is, he only acts with respect to his will. Are we together? So when we pray in the spirit, it is an edge he has given us an apostle Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he says you are wise when you pray in the spirit because in praying in the spirit you will eventually gain the advantage of knowing the will of the Lord and with it you will execute with precision and you will save time not to go around 10 years doing several things you think are the will of God only to find out at the 11th year that you were not in the will of God and you have to come back you have wasted time he says you redeem time when you know the will of God let it not be that I'm roaming around Lagos for 15 years then finally when I get serious with God I find out that it was designed for me to have been in the US and now you have to trust God. You see, this is why God created systems of advantage like restoration and speed. Because he knows that most men will not believe him. Are we together now? If it is God's, in God's intent for you to probably have started the work of the ministry and you've been arguing with the spirit for the last 15 years, imagine how many souls have been tied to you. They have suffered because of your carelessness. That is why when God reveals his will to you, in addition to it, he opens you up to his systems of advantage like restoration and speed. These are his various ways of bringing you up to speed with life and destiny. But my assignment is to charge you. We'll use the remaining 10 minutes to pray. Now you pray with understanding. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You are making declarations of protection and you are saying, well, all I know, God forbid, I know nobody will touch me. You are joking. No, no. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. Are we together? That when men say there is a casting down, for me I decree and declare that there is a lifting up. I like what the Bible calls them. He calls them exceeding great and precious promises. He says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature in experience, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Show me a believer that is full of the word and knows how to engage it with understanding. I show you a man who has mastered the art of effectual prayer. Prayer that produces power. Are we together? So how do you pray over 2024? In the name of Jesus, the Bible declares, this is the day that includes the year that the Lord has made. Who made it? He didn't say the Lord and Satan. The Lord has made. Satan also waits for the day to be made, to, to be part of it. If God makes the day, I go to Genesis 1. What happens when God is the one who makes? He makes all things beautiful and when he makes, he saw that it was good. On the basis of that, my day must be good. On the basis of that, my year must be good. Everything that is inconsistent with the design of God for my life in this season, now you can take authority over it with confidence because you are praying fervent. You are praying effectual prayer. Hallelujah. Your children are misbehaving. You don't just call them and say, God, but I have served you. That looks sincere, but it's not a very wise prayer. Psalm 112 said, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, who delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. That becomes the basis of your prayer. Hallelujah. When the centurion came to Jesus, he said, you do not need to come to my house. Speak the word only. He said, I am a man under authority. I know the power of authority. There is a government, the government of Rome. They back me. And by reason of the authority, I say to one, go. Not because of the sound of my voice. Not because of my stature. I am under authority. I say, you too, I know you did not come on your own. You came representing the government of heaven. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, who taught you? I've not found this faith, not in Israel. Who mentored this man to have this understanding? He 
Is someone listening now? The name of Jesus. You rebuke sicknesses and diseases. You don't just say sickness, go. To where? Why? Why does it go? Is it not in your Bible that a few people said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. What did the demon say? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. What is the basis of obeying you? And they beat the children. This is, this is not the Old Testament. Oh. Produce your strong reason. Why should God lift you? Because I know he loves me too much. Where did you find that? Don't assume. Even Satan said it is written. I hope you know what is written concerning you. The Bible says when Jesus came to the temple in Luke chapter 4, he found, he opened the book of Isaiah and he found where it was written concerning him. Have you found where it was written concerning your job? Have you found where it was written concerning your children? Can I tell you, in this kingdom, it is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. You can use it is written to change what you saw. You can use it is written to change what you heard. I had a dream that you would die. I respect your dream, but it is written. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That becomes the basis of my engaging. Are we together? I see that this year may not be very good for you. Generally, as a prophetic word, that is fine. But uniquely, I define my realities. It is true. It says, true faith, we understand. Do you believe this? We're about to pray. The Bible says the path of the just. Not in 2023, not in 2024. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines more and more. More and more is my heritage. Not, I don't know about you, but it is my heritage. This is not just blind confession. Honestly, you ignore this, you will be surprised that you will be a victim. I hope you know that before Jesus died, he declared that he will come back to life. If he kept quiet, the grave will not open. Let the redeemed of the Lord not think so, not wish so, not assume so. If the redeemed of the Lord say so, then the healed of the Lord will say so. The blessed of the Lord will say so. The lifted of the Lord will say so. You have been thinking so. Wonderful. But it's time to say so. Say what? What God has said. It is the word confession, homologio, to repeat as you have heard. Consistent with what he has said. Hallelujah. When men say there is a casting down, we decree and declare that there is a lifting up. Is that true? Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. In the name of Jesus, where I have been deserted so that no man would pass through me, I become an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. The wisdom of God is at work in my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, going from glory to glory. This is not Pentecostal gibberish. It's how we create realities in the spirit. You see, let me tell you this. Listen before we pray. Papa Copeland is in his 80s now. He's one of the fathers today that represents the pillars of what we know to be the word of faith. And one time I heard him making a statement. When he was younger, he believed the word in the simplicity of faith. And he would declare over his body and speak and do a lot of things. And there were people who laughed at him. Most of those people have long gone. In his 80s, he's still standing today, moving unaided. And there were many arrogant people who, uh, how did the Bible put it? I, I cannot remember the scripture. He says, but I fear. Paul was speaking. He said, less as Satan beguiled Eve. I think he was speaking to the church in Corinth or so. Through subtlety, a deception, inventing a strategy that deviates you from the simplicity of the gospel. It takes childlike approach to the things of the spirit. There are times that they look deceptfully childish. And yet the power of God is hidden in those practices. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. It does not make economic sense. Yet that is the wisdom of God that is hidden. The Bible said it was ordained for our glory. 
I told you yesterday that the end of the believer's journey is that your life eventually becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. And one of these platforms and these weapons that I share with you, in addition to all you have heard this morning, is the power of fervent, effectual prayer. Not just emotional prayer. Are we together now? Not just trado African prayers, sincerely saying, without any sense of um, uh, mockery and, and, and all of that. Most of us need to redefine our understanding about prayer. Probably we have been mentored by sincere people, but we view the prayer ministry from the lens of a defeated believer. If your prayer is not effectual, it cannot produce power. The amount of time and energy that is invested in prayer in Africa with all due respect and honor to all of us believers who pray, if there was fervency and efficiency in our prayer, we would have shifted the climate of the continent by now. So in addition to our zeal, one of the things that the Lord is reintroducing to the prayer ministry of the believer is the word compliancy respect for the ministry of the holy spirit as we pray respect for the supremacy of the word as we pray that emotional prayer does not change climates it is the degree of the word compliancy honor to the spirit of god i sense in my heart that there are people in this place and together as the body of christ we have come into a state of maturity by the spirit thanks to apostolic conferences like this where god helps us to sharpen one another by the spirit to gain ascendance and come to a point of maturity and to be circumspect in our understanding where we begin to pray from lagos to abuja to south africa to kenya to uganda to malawi prayer with understanding and you see that fire of revival and fervency rising and spreading are we together one man who knew how to pray kept the will of god to walk in a land regardless how many prophets of Baal. prayer is powerful but it must be fervent it must be efficient if we take two minutes to pray would that be fine my apologies for stretching i thought we'll have some more time to pray but please rise up on your feet take 30 seconds to pray in the spirit now you understand what you are doing you're not just reciting gibberish mechanical gibberish is a transaction in the spirit the fervent effectual prayer of the righteous availed much what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them when ye pray when ye pray fervently when ye pray effectually or effectively and this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will we know that he heareth us someone pray in one minute Rakata Branda Gabalekatash Cabranda, Ekato Shoto Branda Gabaleke Parados, Sabranda Scabaretta Cateve, Caracata Bracata Balacata Prescata Belegate, Scade Balanta Bacata Bros, Terecata Pacata Prascata Balacata, Embrecata Pereco Tosho Pracata Balada, Cabranda Gabalekata Branda Caparacatos Capres, Cabrande Belantos Cotto Presca Licata, Sharia Sacata Branda Gabalekata, in the name of Jesus, sebra ke parusiata, ha pareka ta pareka pareka tas, skale ka pareka tas ka prende ka pareka ta. Grace, grace, grace to pray, and this time around with passion, with fervency, and then with word compliancy, respecting the supremacy of the word, respecting the supremacy of the will of God. As revealed in scripture respecting the supremacy of the will of God as channeled through the wisdom of the Spirit someone pray obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace, obtain grace. 